Hello and welcome to CNET Around the County. I'm Ann Danahy, host of the program, and today we're talking with Jennifer Shuey, Executive Director of Clearwater Conservancy. Hi Jennifer, thanks for coming in. Hi Ann, thanks for having me. Well, Clearwater has been having a pretty busy year so far, and I thought we could just start by talking about one of your recent projects, Galbraith Gap. Tell us about that. Sure, it's, a, it's an exciting one. We are in the process of raising the money to purchase about 150 acres. Uh, it's called Galbraith Gap, and it is sort of back behind the Tussie Mountain ski area. So as you're heading back into Rothrock Forest, a lot of people think when they get to the trees, they're in the public forest, uh, but there's still some private lands in there. The actual, the most sensitive part of the gap itself is privately owned. So we've been working with a, a landowner in the gap and we'll be purchasing that property. Um, altogether, we've been trying to raise about $700,000 to do that. And uh, we're down to the last bit. We've, we've kind of packaged together lots of grants and uh, we're doing our final public push to, uh, to raise about $30,000 yet for that, pro for that project. Why are you doing it? Why is it important to preserve that and not see development, which I guess could otherwise happen? Um, yes. Uh, ecologically and recreationally, it really has some important values for the community. So ecologically, um, of course, it is adjacent to Rothrock State Forest, so uh, contiguous forest is always a, a very good benefit. Uh, but from a, a water and a habitat perspective, it's really important too. The, uh, the unnamed tributary coming down um, out of this uh, property joins in with Galbraith Gap Run, which is headwaters to Spring Creek main stem. Uh, but Galbraith Gap Run is uh, one of the five remaining naturally reproducing brook trout habitats in the Spring Creek watershed. Uh, Musser Gap that we protected a couple years back was another of them. So, you know, from a habitat perspective, it's really a special place. Um, recreationally, then, uh, the, the local adventure recreation community is very excited about these opportunities, too, uh, because, again, it ties into Rothrock State Forest and the trail systems and makes um, much more uh, easy and usable connections from that whole recreation system back down into town and into Bowlesburg. How does it tie in with Clearwater's overall mission? Is land preservation mm -hmm. one of your main focuses? Absolutely. We have three main areas of focus at Clearwater Conservancy. We do land conservation. So we work with private landowners who are interested in protecting their lands even beyond their lifetimes. So, you know, in, in more rare instances, we'll actually um, put together the funding to purchase property. But we also use a tool called a conservation easement which keeps the property in private ownership, but adds a layer of protection. This conservation easement gives Clearwater some rights in the property, basically the right to not develop it um, over time. Um, so our land conservation program, we also have a water resources protection program. So we do a lot of work with the Spring Creek watershed. Um, we've also been expanding lately um, into the Spruce Creek watershed and into the Little Fishing Creek watershed. Uh, just to the uh, to the north and the south, and um, we've been really strong with our with our riparian restoration program. Riparian, what does that mean? Most just a riparian. fancy word for streamside. So this is the area that sort of gets you the best bang for the buck. If you are protecting the streamside lands, if you're making sure that there's good, strong, healthy vegetation there, it's filtering out pollutants, it's slowing down. Um, the flow of water, which can scour out the streams. It will shade the streams and keep the water cooler, which is really important in a headwaters area like ours. Uh, so we've been doing lots of projects with landowners to, to beef up those buffers and to, to get landowners hooked up with programs that, that can help them with the, uh, with the cost and to bring volunteers out to help and uh, to really create some good partnerships. And we don't do that one alone. We do that one you know, in partnership with all kinds of other agencies and nonprofits in, in the area. So it's a really good uh, showcase of the way we like to do our work at Clearwater, and that is very collaboratively and very partnership oriented. On the riparian buffer, so if you see a stream and there's just grass or it's very short grasses right up the side, that's not really a good thing. There should be more plantings on either side. Is that what you're looking for? 
Absolutely. Actually, when you see mown lawn right up to the edge of the stream, it's not as healthy um, as a habitat, as a way to filter those pollutants um, for shade, you know, for all those good reasons. Um, one of our very first forays into riparian restoration was a project we did probably about a decade ago now out at the uh, Military Museum in Bowlesburg. And, you know, so you can see our before and after pictures where there's, you know, the lawn right up, there's really kind of steep sides to the stream channel. Um, you know, the, it just gets all warmed because, you know, the sun's beating down on it. Um, after that restoration project, um, I thought it was really interesting that the, that the fishermen that, that we know said, hey, there's, there's bigger fish coming back to this segment already from the work that we were doing. So, so, the, uh, so the life really responds to, to the changes that we make to try to bring it back to a more natural condition. You get to see the results really quickly, mm -hmm. it sounds like. Where do you get the financing for all of these projects? Mm -hmm. Well, we are a, uh, a central Pennsylvania-based nonprofit which means that we are supported by the members that, that uh, send in dues and become a part of our organization to allow these great projects to happen. So that's sort of the foundation. But from there, we really leverage our, our local membership dollars um, to, uh, to grant writing and to, uh, you know, to pull in project-based funding for these large projects. We've been very uh, successful, very blessed in being able to attract those monies. Uh, we, do, we do a lot with a little um, as a nonprofit. And I think you know, our success comes from having a really good reputation as an organization, having um, you know, pulled together these big projects and partnerships, and you know, to have the history of, of doing them well. So you know, I hope that really builds the case for, for even more people to, to join us and to, uh, to help us conserve and restore and educate the next generation about conservation and natural resources. Is Clearwater feeling the uh, negative effects of the economy either in terms of uh, reduced grant funding, state funding, or donations from private givers? Mm -hmm. Funding is always a challenge that you know, we have to, uh, to be cognizant of. Um, that said, we've been pretty lucky. <laughs> um, our, our memberships are really, our renewals are holding strong. You know, we're out and about at events and, and programs throughout the community and, you know, are always bringing in new members. Um, the, the, the grant sources are becoming more challenging, but that means we just kind of throw the net wider and are looking for new funding partners. And uh, quite honestly, our, our special events have been um, the best ever this year. Uh, we have two kind of signature events, one in the winter called For the Love of Art and Chocolate, and it did its best ever. And we're recru recruiting right now for corporate sponsors for our Autos uh, Golf Fest, which has become very popular. And we're blowing away last year's um, corporate sponsorship numbers already. So, you know, I think people really, um, you know, once, once they get to know us and uh, get involved in some of our projects and, you know, see uh, the work that we do and the way that we do it, you know, they, they, they're our friends and uh, they keep coming back. So, um, so it's, it's good to Not be part of, down. it's good to be part of an organization like that. On the, other, the flip side of that, do you ever encounter any opposition or resistance, maybe suspicion about your goals? Sometimes, but, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's part of the territory, I guess, uh, when you're dealing with, with land issues. Um, you know, we have a, a particular uh, instance right now where, where some neighbors aren't so happy next to uh, a piece of property that we purchased. Um, so we're trying to kind of go back and learn the lessons from that and, uh, you know, how can we do that better next time? How can we better communicate and uh, you know, make sure that that our neighbors and our, our, our stakeholders are really seeing the benefits of the project. And um, I think in time, uh, they will see that. Um, it'll just take some growing pains to get there. What are their concerns? Well, in this instance, um, it, there's a, a wildlife corridor that we, that we purchased and will be permanently protected open space right now, connecting the Scotia Barrens to uh, Bald Eagle Ridge. And some neighbors are concerned about uh, a small parking lot that we're, we're putting on site. 
Um, usually the, the, uh, the funding sources, the grant sources, have uh, requirements about public access. We're using public money. We have to provide public access. It can't just be a, you know, a private uh, little uh, preserve. But that said, it's it's you know it's it's a small parking lot. It is a wildlife preserve. It's it's not going to be a park. You know, there's I think there's visions of things like Millbrook Marsh Nature Center and programming and infrastructure. And and really, that's not anything that has has been planned for or will be planned for this site. So. Just trying to share that with them and, and make them, or trying to share the information with them too, to kind of alleviate their concerns. And, yeah, and trying to be sensitive to their issues too, because um, you know, any time that 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 you've invested in a neighborhood and a house and and things change nearby, you know, you want to feel like you're part of the process. So, you know, like I said, in hindsight, even better communication would have, uh, I think, helped the situation. Um, but we're really hoping to over time develop a, a good relationship with that neighborhood and, and that they will see the, see the benefits of having this permanently protected open space in their backyards for all time. One of the other initiatives I know that you've been working on lately is um, removing dams, old aging dams. Mm -hmm. And I was amazed to learn how many there are in Pennsylvania. How do you approach that? How do you know which dams need to mm -hmm. be removed and which you're in a position to work with? Mm -hmm. It's a good question, um, and I think that stems back to our strong partnership with the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. Um, you know, they really approached us, seeing the quality of work that we do, and so in our local region, you know, they look to us as as a partner on these projects to help sort of manage, um, you know, manage the restoration, to you know, draw in different kinds of funding sources, draw in other kinds of partners. Um, so we really rely on their expertise and knowledge about uh, which dams uh, you know, are in disrepair and need to be removed. Um, you know, we pull in our consultants for the expertise in, in the design and in you know, recreating that, that natural system um, that had been um, you know, changed for, for, for decades um, and to, to bring that back to a natural condition. So, um, Really, a lot of, of the work that we do, you know, comes up through uh, suggestions from our partners, and you know, we're we're trying to look for the things that we can do collaboratively, and tr to try to do the most important, the highest priority projects. Mm -hmm. um, you know, every now and again, there are these uh, these these projects of amazing opportunity, and you know, we. We uh, don't let those pass by either, but we really try to be intentional about um, about the priorities that we set and about the the projects then that we do to you know over time link all that together. Because there isn't time or money for everything, and we just have a little bit of time left. Could you just quickly tell us about your the trash collection day? It's always amazing how many tons of trash are picked up each year. Of course, we also have uh, volunteer groups out along the streams and along the roadsides and at illegal dump sites in the state forest. And, you know, it really just becomes a big team effort. You know, the tonnage numbers are amazing, but also the number of volunteers that come out on a Saturday in April is amazing, too, to see everybody really gathering together to create an immediate positive change on the environment. Thank you, Jennifer, so much for coming in and telling us about all the projects you have going on. Thank you, Anne. We've been talking with Jennifer Shuey, Executive Director of Clearwater Conservancy. I'm Ann Danahy, host of the program. Thank you for watching, and please come back again as we talk to your friends and neighbors from around the county.